Well, thank you very much for joining us again tonight for another wonderful, wonderful show that we have lined up for you. My name is Maponga J. Garamboko, Garamashamba, Uda, Chira, Nava, Neve, Vanji, Makumba, Mwana, Mwesende, Weshanu, Wana, Chira, Mbaku, Sister, Wana, Mantranga, Ugara, all the way from the Republic and the greater <laughs> kingdom of Mwenem Tapa in Zimbabwe, the ancient kingdoms and the ancient kings of the times gone past. I'm so, so excited tonight to be hosting this show for you where we're discussing African problems and discussing also African solutions. The whole intention of this show is to give us a backward sl a glance which gives us a, few, a future look. So immediately when we begin to look at the past where we are coming from, we can begin to have a map exactly as to where are we and where are we going. Who else in the whole country of South Africa could I find to talk to us tonight but our very honorable elder in the community, Tate Singisa, who is running for us an institution called uh, Zinzi Mandela Foundation. Basically, they are looking at the greater empire of Kemet. Beautiful, in beautiful information right there. I don't want to take away the mic from him and take away some uh, uh, grits, grits and little bits and uh, in interesting nuggets you're going to be learning for today. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not here for the first time. He's not here for the second time. He's not here for the third time. You're going to get familiar to this face as he will be taking us constantly and uh, slowly. I want, I want to allow this information to simmer into our spirits as African people. We cannot at this day and age constantly have our narrative <coughs> being given to us by the Europeans as if we are dead. People talk about us. People talk mm. to us. People talk over us. Mm. No one wants to talk <laughs> with us mm. and hear our stories from our own selves. Please welcome the guest and introduce yourself. Take your time and let, t let the people know and the viewers out there who is in Tate Singh Where is he coming from? What, what, what is his journey like? How do we end up here today talking to him as to understand you so that the people out there can begin to understand what you represent mm -hmm. and what you are here to be telling yes. us for tonight? Yes. Chogozani uh, Umkulun Singiza, the CEO of the Zinzi Mandela Foundation, also the co-founder of uh, the, the great empire of Kemet. Um, uh, Umsebin's way to our job um, uh, and the mandate that we have is to investigate our past as African people so that we are able to use our past as, as a, a, a direct shin finder as to where we are going. Because you'll find that, uh, you know, the information that we've been fed, especially by the West, you know, over, overlooks a lot of, uh, you know, the truth about, uh, you know, African people. And uh, African people uh, are very great. Um, uh, we at, uh, you know, the ZMF, Zinzi Mandela Foundation, uh, we took it upon ourselves to try and, uh, you know, in whatever little way, reconnect Africans to their glorious past so that uh, people, uh, you know, re uh, you know, re-establish that African identity. Um, uh, because what we've noticed is that a lot of people have moved away from their true identity. And especially the more they get educated in these uh, Western uh, institutions, you know, that's the more, you know, they move away from uh, their being. Um, uh, you, you get so many professors, you get so many doctors that have been fashioned by these uh, Western uh, institutions. But, uh, you know, the results, uh, you know, their input mm. in, uh, in as far as uh, saving Africa is concerned uh, is very minimal. Mm. You know, African intelligentsia. Uh, that is why there isn't uh, a direction because the very same people that we rely on mm -hmm to actually, you know, give us the light, you'll find that uh, those are the most people that are colonized mm. in their minds. Mm. So they mimic the West, mm. you know, and actually even avoid associating with the truth about, uh, you know, mm. Africa. Um, uh, people that I respect the most on the continent, uh, you know, the late Ubabu uh, Credo Vusama Zulu, mm. you know, Credo Mutua, ah, Vusama oh, Zulu, Vusama. ah, Vusama Zulu. Mm. Uh, we, we honor Vusama Zulu because he's the one who shared this knowledge. Mm. For over decades, 
He's mm -hmm. been trying to educate Africans mm -hmm. about Africa mm -hmm. and the civilization itself. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, Africa is the cradle mm -hmm. of that uh, civilization. Maybe before, before we go very far, you, you threw in a bombshell right there. By, maybe there's some young people out there who are not in our league of uh, the guys <laughs> who are now forgetting to wash their hair <laughs> and leave milly milly on their chins yes. and milk on their chins. Maybe just a quick, quick <clears throat> background as maybe to introduce us. Maybe someone for the first time they're hearing that name, Credo Vuzama Zulu Mutwa. Who, who is this man and what did he represent and how does he form your worldview in terms of giving you the perceptions and the African epistemologies and the love yes. for the knowledge for the African people. Can you maybe yes. just give us a quick introduction and how you become connected to Ntate Credo Mutwa? Oh, uh, for me, my opinion, Ubabu Credo or Ntate Credo, uh, is a manifestation of the spirit of Imhotep. Mm. You know, Imhotep was one of Africa's greatest, you know, um, uh, 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 inventor, uh, scientist, um, a, a artist, architect, he was everything. Hmm. So when I compare the life of Imhotep, hmm. Imhotep, by the way, he's the one who came up with what is called the Pythagorean uh, theorem. Pythagoras yes, theorem. yes, yes, yes. Hmm. Uh, but then they don't credit him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the victor has actually decided to tell it's our story. History, yeah. You know, yeah. so Ubabu Credo for me, everything I know. Mm. You know, I got foundation uh, from him. Can we put it on record that you're actually a student? Yes. Of Baba Credo Moto? Yo, no, certainly, certainly. How much time did you spend with yeah, him? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes. You know, yes, uh, with uh, Ubabu Credo, because you see, this uh, acquiring this knowledge, mm. uh, uh, it's, not a, it's not an event. Mm. You know, uh, it takes time. It takes time. It one takes of, time. One of my Hebrew, one, when I used to be fascinated with the uh, Christianity and etc. One of my Hebrew scholars actually said to me, professors, says to me, don't memorize my words. Learn my ways and my words will come to you. That is so and true. Our generation right now is actually in a hurry hmm. to get the information. Sure, sure. So they meet you quickly and they think they can just put USB cables into you. <laughs> And, and, and download all the information they need. Oh, no. Certainly, uh, it took me, you know, over, over 20 years. 20 years. 20 years for me to be at the level that I meant. Wow. In terms wow. of uh, knowledge. Knowledge. Base. And uh, the person who gave me that foundation, mm. it's, uh, you know, Vusama Zulu, Kredo Mutu. And the one thing I appreciated uh, with him, every time I would be with him, Mm. He would show me a book, mm -hmm. you know, as an example, uh, you know, a book uh, by Sidkin mm. um, uh, that talks about the Anunnaki. Mm. He showed me and said, here's the book. Wow. But I'm not going to give you. Oh, yeah? Go and get your own, your own copy. Go buy yourself a copy. Go buy yourself a copy. Wow. Well, uh, you know, then I was so worried because I so much the wanted, uh, you know, uh, the knowledge in that book. Then the next day I phone around, they tell me that the only copy they have, mm -hmm. it's in a centurion. And by then you're living in Soweto? I'm living in Soweto, yeah. even currently, right. you know, I'm still living no, in Soweto. No, I've been to your home. I've been to yes, your home. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I leave, uh, you know, Soweto. my home, Soweto, rushing to centurion. Yeah. On the way there, mm -hmm. I met with an accident. My word. The car, you know, overturned several, a couple of times, but... When uh, the ambulance uh, came to pick you up, to pick uh, to pick me up because I was uh, with my wife then. Oh, mercy! Yes, one one thing I requested from them. Please, before I go to the <laughs> hospital, okay, I can, almost can I go to Centurion <laughs> and get that book? And uh, because I knew. I will then, you know, be able to read while while I'm in hospital. Yeah, I'm in hospital. Wow! So. Wow. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate it to Babu Credo because oh. a lot of, uh, you know, these uh, colonized, you know, doctors and professors yeah. from universities, yes. they ridicule him yes. for several, uh, you know, years, several years yeah. um, uh, calling him all sorts of names. Mm. And Babu Credo, all he was doing was to share. 
mm. you know, the scientific knowledge, mm. you know, about the continent, mm. who we are, what mm. is our background, mm. what we used to be, mm. you know, uh, before colonizers uh, came here. Mm. He even uh, spoke about, uh, you know, uh, in Zaloe Lang. Wow, wow. Where he was initiated. That, that, that one, I think it will need a full... It no, is, sure, it, it sure. Need, it's on, it's on <laughs> sure, full. Sure. But we, 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 can, we can openly say, over and above the committee and the other yes. civilizations that are in Africa, mm. we actually have much, much older and much more ancient yes. historical sites, yes. which are scattered within the Southern Hemisphere. Yes. And for historical purposes of colonialism, these sites and the knowledge system that they contain has not been shared with the world. Before we go very far, actually, I would love maybe for you to share with us maybe one or two fond memories that you could have shared with Ndate, Ndate Credo Mutwa, you know, for Samazulu. Maybe just one warm mem, you know, moment of uh, close contact. You know, it, it, it's gone, it's just passed away. Uh, this year, when COVID uh, uh, mm -hmm. strikes South Africa, mm -hmm. within a week or two of that COVID story, it was sad enough to hear that the tree had fallen. Mm -hmm. And before he passed on, I was privileged also in my own uh, escapades when I was doing my research on going places in the spirit, a book that I wrote, that I actually took a drive, 500 kilometers from Johannesburg. Mm. And I spent a day or two with him at his, at his house, mm. learning and listening and etc. Some warm moments. Jim, 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 just throw the mic to you. I think, uh, you know, one of uh, the, 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 the moments that uh, I value the most, you know, it's when, it's when he is sharing, but uh, he is sharing He's very patient, mm. you know, with you, mm. taking you step by step. Mm. Uh, he's the one who gave me the foundation mm. that says we are spirit before mm. we are flesh. Wow. It is the spirit that mm. has created mm. this flesh in Nook. Mm. So that is Ubabu Credo. Wow. Saying that, you know, the spirit mm. is the most important thing because even when I look at you, mm. Um, uh, it is your, your, my eyes are mm. in, instrument mm. for the spirit that it dwells wow. within me. Mm. So he, he explained uh, even, uh, you know, uh, how the Western, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, education is limited. Mm. Because he said, uh, he used to call, uh, call me Nkosana. Mm. He would say Nkosana. Um, oh. You know that uh, the Western civilization or the Western education is very limited. I said, why, mm. Baba? He would say, no, because the Westerners, they concentrate more on everything that has manifested, mm. right? Mm. Uh, you know, they, they're not interested in learning about mm. the, 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 the source of that manifestation, mm. what principles mm. were involved. As an example, mm. you see a physical apple, mm. right? Mm. But all oh, Cocobet were not interested in, in the, the apple physical. itself, yes. but they were interested in the principle, mm. you know, that created that the apple. apple. Wow. So wow. that is a comprehensive education for us to understand even uh, the principles that are involved mm. in every creation. In you know, um, uh, on, on, on this mm. earth, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are not in a hurry for this conversation to end. The advantage you have on this particular show that you are running is that I am a, I'm a qualified academician from the theological space in terms of Christian theology. Sure, you he is a qualified uh, Kemetic scholar in, in traditional, and in one room, you are able to actually have the interaction of ideas without aminosity and without anger. Mm. And what the uh, Singh is always saying, that we are spirit first mm. before we become physical. Sure, sure. Then the Christians want to hold their chair quickly and say, no, 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 no. You are now tempering with the key issue of demons. I want just to put that little verse so that I am aware, many of our audience out there are from the Christian perspective. And just for, for us slowly as we're having this conversation, it is to bring this knowledge system together because you are all aware Yes, you are all aware that uh, Kemetic knowledge is actually much more, much more older sure. than the Hebraic Torah sure. teaching. Sure. With that in mind, therefore, if you read your Bibles in the book of Jeremiah, it says, I knew you before you were born, before you were even in your mother's womb. Mm. I molded you, yes. I crafted you, yes. and then I placed you yes. in your mother's womb. Yes. 
then Christians look at this verse and you are in a hurry to, to say, I understand what God is talking about. Mm. But if you look at it very carefully, the Bible does not undermine the fact that the spiritual communication mm. actually precedes mm. the physical manifestation. Mm. And even when you say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, you have a creative being mm. prior to the manifestation of the physical. And I think because of the Eurocentric perception of mm. how we look at things, mm. this has been distorted. Sure. Hold, hold the thought right there. We'll be able to take a small little uh, break here. And uh, we are going to continue the conversation on top of the program when we come back. I just want Babe Nsingiswa to take us back, maybe in a, in a nice little nutshell, uh, prepare your mind, tell us what have we lost as Africans. When you look at me and today, I came looking like a real Italian <laughs> Jewish man dressed up in a jacket and a tie. You know why I do this? Because I can. Yes. I can do that. Yes. I can do this. You, can, you can't do what I can do. Just after the break, we'll be right back. Sure. Don't go away. <laughs> sure. Welcome to Amanda Omnoto Business Talk Show. Because the legacy left by the apartheid government, yeah. it's very important that for business people, whether they are especially SMMEs, yeah. in doing business with developing countries. The measurements, on the other hand, that have been introduced to deal with COVID-19 have harmed our economy beyond what I think has even been measured. The giants like China realizing that the US and Europe are losing the grip in the world economy and Africa was a playground. Many of black people's small businesses in particular are not even registered. Any country yeah. that has ever been reliant on IMF has never been able to come out. Africa is indebted to Asia and Europe. Welcome to Amanda Omnoto Business Talk Show, a show that discusses economic fundamentals with a focus on small businesses. Tune in to Amanda Omnoto Business Talk Show on Galaxy Universal Network, Channel 500 on Starset. Welcome one, welcome all back to your show here, African Problems, discussing African solutions. We are having an Aten Singiswa from the Sinzi Mandela Foundation, taking us through the greater African knowledge system from the Kemetic time to where we are. And just before we left for the break, we we're talking about the issue that the spirit manifests in the flesh. And what we are discussing here, these are not Western paradigms of thinking. We are talking as Africans. How do we look at ourselves? Even as an African man, when you greet an adult, you don't greet him in singular, mm -hmm. you greet him in plural, mm -hmm. because you are aware that within sure. him, th there is more that I'm looking at mm -hmm. than, what, than the physical manifestation itself. And I know you wanted to say something just about the issue of the spirit yes. manifesting itself through the physical space. Yes. Um, uh, remember, you know, even uh, through our, you know, enlightenment initiation, you know, uh, in the African uh, sense, they teach you that uh, you actually respect even the child mm. because the spirit that lives within that child much older. is much older than the child than the child wow. um, um, uh, where you know um, uh, then it comes the issue of the genetic memory mm. where you know uh, you know that something you know it but you don't know mm. how you How you know that you know, it. but you know yes. that you know. Yes, certainly. <laughs> then there's what is called, you know, Westerners call the conscious mind mm -hmm. and the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Remember, the conscious mind is is linked to that web or internet of spirits. Wow. Then the conscious mind, the conscious mind feeds on the mm. subconscious. Mm. That's why they say that you must always be careful mm. of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you feed your subconscious mind mm. 
all the time negative things, yes. you are then pulling those Energy. uh, negative uh, energies. Uh, and what, what, what you are saying, Mkulu, <clears throat> is very critical. Because mm. many of our viewers out there, they think that by becoming Christian, it changes your DNA. Mm. Because you wake up in the morning, you wake in your nice little tight jacket and brown shoes, and I believe in Jesus. Mm. Okay? It's a, fair and fine. Mm. But the fact that you believe in Jesus, you're still going to bold mm. on your head. Mm. The problems and diseases that are still in you were inherited mm. from your forefathers. Sugar diabetes, yes. high blood pressure, mm. heart failures, and etc. Mm. Hence, when you go to a hospital, they ask you, mm. do you have a history of this in your family? Because even the medical world no, sure. understands that when we are dealing with you, mm. we are not dealing with you in the present. No, sure. We also need to look at you from the past to, mm. where, to where you are coming from. And this genetic library you are talking about mm. is instilled... Yes. in all of us and as africans mm. we always avoid looking at the present mm. but always want to look at where you are coming from for mm. the roots mm. are stronger than the tree itself for they mm. keep the tree up on its feet oh no certainly another thing uh, you know what animates us mm. what gives me the ability to walk mm. what gives me the ability to breathe mm. and uh, what do we say when that spirit has departed mm. from you wow you are dead mm. So the most important thing, mm. remember the spirit never dies. Mm. You can shoot me, you can stab me, you can do whatever mm. to this body, but you can never touch my spirit. Mm. You know, because uh, another thing, Africans before, mm. they look forward to death mm. because they viewed... It's a transition. It's a transition. Mm. They viewed, uh, you know, this earthly existence mm as imprisonment as a person. of uh, you know the soul mm. do you understand so when you are then uh, you know um, when you die you that spirit is released again I, is I, free again i had an interesting one the other day in my weirdness of thinking mm -hmm. you know let's say you have a heart problem you have a soft heart then you're sleeping and in your sleep you dream and while you're dreaming you travel to wherever you are, you're traveling and you happen to be very scared of snakes mm. in, in the physical. Mm. But while you are dreaming, you are in the spiritual world. Mm. And boom, while you are dreaming there, these bunch of snakes come to you. Mm. Of course, you know, there's a relationship between what's happening in the subconscious sure. and what's happening in the conscious. Sure, sure. And while you are dreaming of these snakes, your heartbeat yes. on the physical <laughs> side yes. begins to palpitate. <laughs> yeah. But you are where you are. Mm. Let's say, just for example, a snake bites you mm. there. And your heart overbeats on the physical <laughs> side. And yeah. you die physically. The question is, where did you, where did you die? <laughs> In the spirit. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you are, you are physically quiet here. Yes. But you are active where you are. No, so certainly. At the end of the day, what is death? It no, becomes certainly. an absence of the spirit no, from, certainly. From, from the body. And uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, people have experience whereby you dream of something. Mm. Then the next day it manifests. You see it happening there you go. physically. There you go. You know, mm. uh, so these things, you can't separate the two mm. and say the spirit uh, is more important than, than the, the body. body. Yes. Because the spirit mm. needs mm. the body to fully express, mm. you know, uh, 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 its will. Wow. So um, uh, this thing, which is I sometimes uh, always, uh, you know, hope on, when you perpetuate colonization in your mind, mm. you are actually further imprisoning yes, your please. ancestors. Wow. wow. Because your wow. ancestors wants to fully express through you. For the sake of our younger viewers, when you hear these big words like ancestors, I know, again, you want to hold on your chair to run away. Mm. I'll give you a working definition, which will calm you down. Mm. Ancestors, let's just say it's you. In your previous life mm -hmm. can, can you work with that definition mm -hmm. in other words ancestors mm -hmm. it's your dna mm -hmm. prior oh, no, sure. to your arrival no sure so when you are actually sure. running away from your ancestors <laughs> you're sure. running away from your shadow no sure so in you calling on god of abraham god of jacob and mm -hmm. isaac mm -hmm. those are all also dead spirits mm -hmm. and by the way there's a verse i saw the other day which says do not consult unfamiliar spirits mm -hmm. But it says nothing about familiar spirits. Mm, mm. Now, the question is, have you ever dreamt about Joshua or dreamt about Abraham? Never. But how come you would not want to relate to where you are coming from? And mm. I've said this and I'll mm. say it again. Mm. If the European system managed to tell the African mm. that your dead grandfather is a demon, mm. 
it only makes you a demon waiting to become no no sure <laughs> i fully i fully agree another thing people should look at you know um, at the foundation or the source mm. of all these books you know your torah your quran your your bible mm. the source it has been proven mm. it's african text mm. you know what is called now the you know book of the dead but mm. our ancestors called it the book of coming forth mm. the enlightenment you know, where you, they teach you mm. about the laws mm. that govern the universe and mm. how to harmonize, mm. you know, with those laws. Mm. Like now, we are in a season, uh, we'll t come and talk about uh, the African calendar. Mm. We are in the season of Sekhmet. Mm. Sekhmet, they say Sekhmet is the eye of Ra. Mm. There is what uh, is called the... U, 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 reyes, mm. you know, in the Kemetic, uh, you know, spirit. Mm. In Zulu, we call it umbilini. umbilini. That is the cold Umbilical energy cold. on your spine, right? Uh -huh. um, uh, that when you activate it, it comes to the, your third eye mm. here. Mm. And this is, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, science. Mm. You know, it and what, is, what is so exciting to me, but while, while I'm listening to you, is that we, we, would, we would sit down as, as educated Africans and bask in the sunshine of European rubbish and mischief. That insults African knowledge system. The very fact that the, an African has words <laughs> that, that describe and explain this new age sort of thing, energies, mm. you know, mm. new age of Aquarius, mm. you have this, <laughs> uh, whatever they call them, the third eyes. And yeah. if you hear, as so you say, umbili, umbili yes. we, we literally are saying we are aware of the energies and while you're on that i might just drag you a little bit in shona the word we use for holy spirit quite interesting we call it mudzimu unoera mm. now mudzimu is actually ancestor mm. and the ancestor who is holy mm. the ancestor who is pure mm. so it means that when you're saying mudzimu unoera in shona you are saying we want to call upon the cleanliness of the spirits of your forefathers mm. to be working together with you on the same issue of dreams and visions in shona culture when you wake up in the morning you know, I know we say Sanbona, Saubona, and Fuganjan, but in Shona we actually say Zehope. Mm. Zehope Mukawa. Mm. Meaning to say, did you have any whispers mm. in the night mm. <laughs> from the spiritual world? Sure, sure. Are you bringing sure. us information sure. in the morning sure. to the sure. land of the living? Sure. Therefore, when Shona people wake up in the morning, sure. we don't wake up to greet each other. Mm. We wake up to find the signals. When you were sleeping, mm. were you able to connect mm. to the spiritual world? and get information from them. I still get angry in the singers well with a passion because the very same African person who now believes in the Bible stands to condemn dreams and visions. Yet the entire Bible text it's based on that. It's based on vision. Oh no, sure, sure. And it's based on dreams. No, sure, sure. Another thing just to demystify the issue of uh, the ancestor. The ancestor, these are eternal principles. Mm. of creation mm. they are nine mm -hmm. active principles of creation wow you know uh, that also maintains creation mm. that is why you stay for nine months in your mother's, in your mother's belly each month so that uh, all these principles wow, are you know, that actually one, you know I, think manifest. I, 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 I wish some people in, someone in the back of the room there these issues that he's mentioning and i'm not allowing him to expand on them please take some notes i want us to come back one day sure. and maybe just maybe focus on the we've already mentioned the first one is the mm -hmm. the, the the one in um, in pumalanga mm -hmm. in zaloyelanga the cradle of humankind in south africa here he's mentioning again the reason why we spend nine months mm -hmm. in our mother's wombs to activate the nine levels of creation mm. that we have. Mm. And while you are sleeping in your mother's womb, which are the salt waters, mm. the alkaline yes. waters. Yes. And then you come back again to the real concept yes. of spirituality. Yes. How alkaline water yes. and an alkaline diet yes. works with the body so yes. that the body can become spiritually active. Ladies and gentlemen, in the studio today, we've met in Singiswa, uh, taking us like little crawling children, step by step, leading us on this path to understand our ancient past. In your own words, what have we lost as Africans? When you, in your old age, you, you look at us today, young boys and boys coming around, excited about all these things. When you look in hindsight, what do you think we have lost as Africans? I think uh, the African identity. Wow. You know, the African today is so confused 
uh, uh, moving between the two worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, they are not able to take a position, mm. you know, and make uh, African identity and African culture mm. as the culture of choice. Mm. Why? Because currently the Western culture pays the bill. Okay. And, uh, you know, as long as we don't have a strong economic muscle, mm. we will continue to be slaves to be following mm. Westerners in our own continent. Mm. So what I always preach mm. is that mm. the first thing that we need to do mm. is to build a strong economic mm. arm, mm. you know, for African people, starting here, you know, in South Africa. Mm. If, look, we are... Over 40 million, mm. you know, black Africans yes, in sir. South Africa. Yes, sir. That's a critical uh, buying critical power. Mass. Critical, critical mass. buying power. Mm. So if we can uh, use that, leverage that mm. to create our own economy, economy yes. you know, then we will be able to mm. freely mm. express mm. our culture and identity. Wow. For now, we compromise a lot because mm. we still work for these uh, Westerners. So now, I want you to hold I want you to hold the thought right there. There's another idea that is uh, running in and some of our viewers here are already throwing questions. Mm. They're with us. We have more than a couple of thousands that are already following us sure. on our social media. Sure. But I know this is a bigger subject where we can deliberately look into the demystifying of the African uh, and, and indigenous African perception mm. from a traditional healer or a, a what you call them, indigenous healer to a Gobela, to a Sanusi, to a, you know, there are various classifications, to the one who knows medicines and etc. I know, I've sat down under your feet a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I've heard those divisions. And I know someone out there is just throwing in a question right now, saying, why did Ndate uh, Credo call himself a uh, Sanusi? What, what would you define as a Sanusi? Sanusi, uh, I would say in the, you know, Western context is the high priest you know, uh, the keeper of knowledge. Keeper of knowledge. The keeper of knowledge. Mm. The one that uh, the ancestors whispered in their ears mm. and they uh, revealed certain secrets mm. about, uh, you know, us as African people. Mm. So for, for me, Ubabu Credo, it's that symbol. You wow. know, um, the keeper of knowledge keeper. because, yes, he possessed ancient knowledge. Mm. Ubab Credo know all the ancient sites, not only in South Africa, whole world. all over the world. I mean, some, you of, you, some <clears throat> of you might not know. Uh, open up your minds and open up your hearts. Google around. Go to some internet. There's some YouTube. Find out some of the uh, stories that are written there. Big scientists. David Icke, for example, mm. is, is actually came to South Africa here to do huge documentaries about unfortunately as africans again it is a shame that the only time we celebrate you is, is at your funeral mm -hmm. that's when we write urologies the size of a mountain mm -hmm. that's where we celebrate in terms of putting up a big stone mm -hmm. and etc but imagine at the sunset of his life that's mm -hmm. the only time the government of south africa 25 years later could put a window and a door at the house at which he was staying yet we had this library mm -hmm. of information that is looking at us mm -hmm. don't go away we'll be right back after the short break here let us go to the shops and get some bills paid we are sitting in studio today with Ntate Singiswa, who is running the within the Mandela Foundation taking us through some ancient knowledge systems where are we coming from where are we and where are we going and when we come back on top of the program I want to push him towards the direction what have we lost as Africans he has already mentioned one which is identity I want to hear him. I want to pinch him a little bit in the light of coronavirus in terms of our herbs and pinch you a little bit in terms of uh, our calendars here and there and pinch you in terms of our economy and etc. The Africa that we, we used to be to the Africa that we are now. What have we lost? Maybe you think that colonization was a benefit until you understand the glory of the ancient times. Your host Maponga J, don't go away. We'll be right back.
a warm welcome to Galaxy News. My name is Sandra Nomusaga Kobe Kuto, and this is Pan African Morning. Of course, I'm not going alone. I'm going with my co-host, the one and only, the Pan African woman, Balisa Motumian. How are you, my darling? I'm wonderful, Bahai Tsudimelang. Yes, welcome to the Pan African Morning right here on Galaxy Universal Network. At Galaxy Universal Network is a company owned by the five directors. As I have said, the CEO uh, is led by an able woman. And uh, we are a black-owned company. And as such, part of our mission, vision, sacrifice, and choices is to conquer the African continent. By that I mean from Zambia, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Nigeria, Algeria, Kenya, Tanzania. Okay, Cairo. Okay, to Cairo, my sister. However, a part of our plan and our mission is to provoke mindsets and the hearts of the African people by, 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 by telling untold stories in an authentic way, in an unbiased way, in a way that has never been told before. I think the most important thing in life is about e-growth. You know? From where you were, I always tell young people that we must compete with our yesterday. And I got to prison. Um, I had said, okay, right now, now they have sentenced me uh, to effective seven years. So what next? What am I going to do with my time? And I remember telling one of my very good friends, close friend, Nathan Maria Ramon, I said to him, you know, when I leave this place, I'm going straight to a man that sentenced me. He was taken aback. He couldn't understand. Would you, why would you go back to a man? Of course, he thought Good not I wanted to harm this man. I said, it's because that man changed my life. So there's something that's called time. When I'm talking to young people, we must always redeem the time. I no longer live in times, but I live in moments because I understand what the freedom means. So young people, because of the wrong decision that I've made one day, I was told I'm in the most hopeless of places, which was the present. I had to start building all over again. Welcome back, welcome back. We're excited and thank you very much for spending some time here with us as we're having our own conversation around African issues. Ladies and gentlemen, the colonial system will never come to Africa and teach the African people things that make them assertive. All the education system we've received so far is there to manage our intellect, mm. reduce us from the great kings that we are. But when you look back into the history where we come from, we have a glorious history, we have a glorious past. Mm. And I love something about seeds. No matter how useless the seed might be, when it is placed on the correct soil, is it not surprising? You may think that it's dead, mm. but man, just place it properly mm. and water it. Mm. Come back a few seasons later, mm. you'll find a massive, beautiful sure. tree. So I don't know who is out there, who is actually benefiting from this, but if there is anything we can achieve through these programs, it is just to plant that seed in your spirit that reminds you of you, who you are. So that we can begin to treat each other with a great respect mm. at which we have. I had just mentioned before we went for the break, can you just maybe take us through what have we lost as the Africans from the past where we're coming from to where we are? You had already mentioned the first one, which was identity. Maybe just give us a quick rundown of some of the critical issues. And I wish you can also make a comment on the greater indigenous medicines mm. in the light of the COVID and the Madagascar cure that has been found. We also hear some news that the Rwanda government has already approved in South Africa here with Mshonyana, and I saw someone already selling Mshonyana plants oh, no, they are selling. To, be, to, be, to be putting them in our houses. Mm. You know, and, and I love that. I love COVID for some strange reason. Mm. It was like a wake-up clout mm. on the African system that you cannot always be queuing at the pharmaceutical. You know, I must go to my doctor. He will sign me a prescription. Man, our kitchens used to be hospitals mm. our bushes sure. our pharmaceuticals sure. and uh, sure. when you look at us today <clears throat> what do you think we are looking at what have we lost we we, we are weak we've lost uh, you know everything that we used to hold uh, you know very very you know give it uh, you know so much value uh, we have devalued ourselves mm. why because i'll make an example uh, the system that we operate under. Mm. It's a Western construct. Mm. It's not a tried and tested governing system mm. of the continent. Mm. So this system mm. promotes a certain lifestyle. Mm. I'll make an example. Mm. 
South Africa here, it was declared crime against humanity mm. in 19, uh, you know, 73, 74 there by the UN body. The same people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The UN declared South Africa crime against humanity. The apartheid system. Meaning the system mm. that was started by colonizers. It's still well, you know, uh, and alive today. Mm. So that is why most of our things are stifled. Mm. Why? Because the system we operate under, mm. you know, it's wrong for us. Mm. It's an imposed system. Mm. You know, this is the system that has made us uh, lose the value. As an example, like um, Shonyan, mm. our healing system, mm. it goes back to the spirit again. Mm. You know, uh, there were months and seasons Mm. Within the African calendar, mm. that we knew that certain energies mm. were prevalent mm. to heal the bones, mm. to heal the lungs, mm. to heal the headache, mm. to heal whatever. Mm. So everything was aligned with nature wow. in our own system. Mm. So when we abandon that, mm. we, we abandon the core of our being mm. because we then follow, mm. you know, blindly everything that came mm. with this uh, you know structure that is a uh, you know a crime against african people mm. because it's not only south africa mm. all, over the continent, all over the continent this structure of the republics mm. prevails meaning that uh, africa is ruled mm. by a structure that has been declared mm. crime against africans wow wow, wow. so Wow. That is the foundation of, mm. of, of our problem. The, the emphasis, the emphasis uh, that we are receiving now is that we actually, by messing up our indigenous ways of living, mm. our indigenous ways of health, healing, which I like also, you mentioned and you are intimating that the healing of the body was not just a physical healing. The healing, it, when you get to a, a, a traditional or an mm. indigenous person who is supposed to give you some healing, mm. you, you say I have a headache. They're not going to be giving you medication for the headache. They're going to try and find out from you, how did you sleep last night? Sure. <laughs> Where is your mother? <laughs> sure, sure. And you're thinking, what does my yes. mother have to do with the headache? You yes. know, because we, they want to establish yes. the, 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 the yes. energies, yes. the spiritual connectivity, yes. which leads to the headache. Maybe the headache is a siren from another thing. Then the, the, the healing the symptom. Becomes, and yet the colonial system of healing, you go there with the headache, they give you an aspirin, which just stops the to signal. To suppress. So it's almost like you have a headache, you, the yeah. house is on fire, yes. and the signal is on. Mm. Guess what you do? Mm. You go and switch off the signal. Mm. Does mm. that extinguish the fire? No. And hence, when you find that the healing of the European mm. is not holistic. Yes. Because it is symptomatic. Yes. And does not deal with the... With, with, with the, the root with, cause. With the root cause. Yes. Of the, and in Pand, in, in Shona, we call it Mids. Yes. Those are the roots. And in Shona again, when you talk about midzi, mm. it talks of roots, mm. but midzi are actually the sources. Mm. And the word midzi, that's where the word midzimu comes yes, from. Yes. And the word midzimu, yes. literally broken, means midzi, mm. umu, mm. meaning inside his roots. <laughs> right. So when you trace your roots, mm. you are tracing midzi, mu. No, you are sure. walking back into your roots. And in these roots, in terms of your ancestral lineages, in terms of the vegetation that you have, Inside these roots, do we find healing? Do we find actual restoration of the human body? So we've mentioned, number one, mm -hmm. that the African has lost his, uh, his dignity and his self-respect and his self-worth. Number two, we have lost our, 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 our medicine mm -hmm. and our healing, holistic methods. Number three, we have lost our governance system mm -hmm. because we're being run by a foreign mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. on, an, on an African platform. Yes. Maybe just maybe to give the younger viewer out there an, an appreciation. Mm -hmm. How does an African political leader <laughs> assume power to lead Africans when his psychology <laughs> and thinking is actually fully embedded in a colonial system? What does an African leader become when he manages African politics using European systems? I can say it's like, a, you know, a blind leading the blind. Why? Because where are you taking your people? Mm. In the first uh, instance, if you don't believe and uh, you also join in the choir that calls uh, the principles, the spirits mm. that are responsible, that are a cause for any manifestation 
mambo jambo. Mm. There you've lost it. Mm. You know, uh, because another thing, um, uh, uh, most of our leaders, mm. they, they concentrated in their research and history, mm. they concentrated more mm. on the political history of the continent mm. instead of focusing also mm. on the pre-colonial history wow. of the continent because that is where most of our solutions would actually come from. Wow. This is where they would know that civilization mm. started here mm. in the south. Maybe just as a teaser, as a teaser, I know we'll come back to this one another day. Just as a teaser, just give us a quick overview, a quick overview of the African prehistoric civilization. The, the whole, maybe just take us through from Cape to Cairo yes. as an eagle. Yes. In Zingisa. Yes. As, as, a, as, as a bird flying yes, above yes. the greater African continent. Yes, yes. Introduce yes. your grandchildren yes. to the glory yes. of the African kingdoms yes. in their yes. vast array. And when yes. we look at it, what yes. can we learn in our present generation? Africa was uh, ruled by kingdom, various kingdoms on the continent. And, uh, you know, their foundation mm. was the spirit. Mm -hmm. Like the king. Mm. The king is supposed to represent the creator mm -hmm. and the queen mother mm. on earth. Mm. You know, is God mm. uh, is supposed to represent is God as a palace. For yes, some a of palace. You might not know it's supposed to mm. represent that. Mm -hmm. Meaning that uh, when we say, you know, um, uh, the mouth of a king yes, never tell lies. Mm. You know, mm. because we believe you know, that you are connected mm. to the creator. Wow. The creator s talks or speaks through you. Through you. Mm. That is why whatever you say to us, God has it spoken. has to manifest mm. because God has spoken. Mm. But now, if you remove, you know, that... Indigenous systems. Like that system, that, uh, you know, governing system, mm. you are then dislodging mm. the African from its center. Mm. You know, because Upkosi mm. centers us. Mm. We are spiritual is it, people. Is it not funny that while the British uh, empires ran around the world, Destroy <laughs> yes. empires. They maintained. Their queen is still in place. No, sure, The sure. king is still in place. Sure. And look, I was, sure. in, I was in London the, the day they strike Saddam Hussein mm. in, uh, in, in Baghdad. Guess what was the headline on the newspaper that morning? Mm. Queen Anne's dog bites the Queen's poodle. Yo, 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 yo. Because yo. the news to them is not how many people are dying <laughs> yes. in Iraq. Yes. The news to them was the royal news. Mm. And Britain could actually turn its eyes mm. on the soldiers that are in Baghdad mm. and focus at Queen's and Queen Anne is another sister to the Queen. Mm. The, the her dog visited this one and beat this one. Mm. The, the one that the Queen makes dogs for. But, but it says that the palace mm. unites mm. the kingdom yes. and holds Britain together. Together. That's, that's the thing. That, that is what, uh, you know, kept Africa, you know, um, uh, uh, together. Mm. And uh, what we call Ubuntu mm. or Kokobetu or ancestors used to call Ma'at. Mm. That was the moral code mm. that prevailed throughout the whole continent. Mm. You know, uh, the destruction of Ma'at mm. brought chaos, mm. not only in Africa, the whole world. Can I pinch you a bit on Shona? Uh -huh. When we pray, guess what we say in Shona? Kuna ma'at. Ah. <laughs> so kuna mata. Yes. In Shona yes. means connecting yes. with ma'at. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. So these are the two uh, 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 things that kept us together. Mm. But now you can't compare, you know, uh, the kingdoms or the sitting kings, mm. you know, uh, that are there today. Mm. Why? Because firstly, they are ignorant of their own past. Wow. You know, most of them have been uh, fashioned mm -hmm. or trained in the Western system. Mm -hmm. That is why most of them, you see them... There's no value. There's no There's value. There's no value. Maybe our time is running, is running very fast, and I know the hour has almost flown past. I can't believe it that we actually an hour has gone uh, past. But I wanted just to remind the viewers out there, we have the greater cradle of humankind in South Africa. 
We have the clock and the watch of uh, Pumalanga. We have the Mapunguke ruins. In, and the pyramids. The pyramids. The oldest pyramids in Pumalanga. Ah, right in Pumalanga. Yes. Yeah. We have Mapunguke mm. in, uh, in, in Venda. Mm. We have Domboshava in mm. Botswana. The Great mm. Zimbabwe. We have mm. Chena ruins. Mm. We have the pyramids of Sudan. Mm. The civilizations of mm -hmm. Mali. The pyramids of Giza. Mm. In, in, even in, did you know that even in Nigeria, the yes, pyramids. Yes, that's true. And All over you, the continent. When you look at African that's civilization, true. what that's we true. want you to know for tonight, mm. you are not coming from a, you are not coming from a dark continent. Mm. You are coming from an illustrious, mm. glorious, mm. powerful history. That if we can tap into that history, mm. we may just find that actually from architecture mm. to medicine Everything. to fashion Everything. to clothes. To read it, I, I, the other day I read this uh, civilization in Mali where, where they are counting stars and what and what. The griotis mm. reciting history, 60 generations mm. by word of mouth, not written down. Yeah. And you look at this glorious mm. history and a little, little boy comes out from Massachusetts mm. and Harvard University and say, I hold a PhD. Sorry for the language. PhD my foot. <laughs> How can you hold a PhD in knowing William Shakespeare? And you're ignorant and of Charles your own. Dickens and you don't even know a pinch about your history. Please give us some advice to some educated young boys and girls out there yes. who are saying we are learning. What is it that we must learn? Give us some sources. Give Please. us some references. Yes, yes. And, and yeah. They must look at uh, you know all the books by Babu Credo Mutwa, Fusama uh Zulu -huh. Credo Mutwa, all the books by Sheikh Anta Diop. Uh -huh. Everything written by Theophile Obenga. Uh -huh. So as a start. Uh -huh. And uh, another one that, uh, you know, will then clear the mystery in terms of civilization uh, by George James. It's called Stolen Legacy. Stolen Legacy. That will tell you uh, 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 where Pythagoras uh, studied. Started. Okay. Where you know, um, uh, I, I, wish someone, oh, I wish someone in the back there could be taking these books down yeah. and share them on the screen. Just, just say them for me one more time. I want these guys in the back to capture all them. All books by Babu Credo, all the books by Babu Credo Mutua, all the books by Sheikh Anta Diop, Sheikh Anta Diop, yes, yes, all uh, everything that is written by Theophile, Professor Theophile Obenga, or Theophile Obenga. Theophile then Obenga. the fourth one, mm -hmm. a book called uh, you know Stolen Legacy, Stolen by George Legacy. James. By George, it James. will give you a scientific research, mm. you know, as to where Pythagoras learned. God is theories. You know, all these Greek and Roman, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, philosophers, mm. which then confirms that there is no Western civilization, only but one civilization. only one civilization, which is African civilization, because the people who are credited Western mm. civilization were taught by Africans. We are not in a hurry, Dr. Singiswa, Singisa. We, we are going to come back to these issues <laughs> yeah, yeah. and unpack them slowly. Yes, yeah. Because I would want maybe one day, I want, uh, yes, I want one day maybe to have an, an opportunity where we can actually have a conversation as to the, the, this civilization we're talking about, the technologies that we're talking about, yes. and how do we end up where we are, yes. and how did the history of the, of the, of the African yes. end up as his story, yes. instead of it being our story. Yes. Your final putting, putting shot in exactly 30 seconds, give us a word of encouragement as Africa right now on the death of uh, George Floyd in, in, in America, and a word for the black Africans, how do we preserve ourselves? What uh, kept us together? It was the great empire of Kemet, mm. which was an empire that uh, involved all kingdoms on the continent. Mm. That is when Africa was united. And that empire mm. is responsible for bringing civilization to the whole world. Wow. That, uh, you heard it for yourself. There's nothing that we can do in terms of being torn apart. My grandmother had a proverb that says you can take one grain or you can take one stride of grass. You can break it easily. But once you put mm. those uh, strands of grass together and you, you make up that one big broom, mm. no matter how strong you are, yes. it will be impossible yeah. to break that. Uh, so that even the weakest amongst us, mm. even the most despised amongst us, mm. the Hottentots, for example, the Khoisan, Ama Shangan, when people are tired of you and they want to hey. insult you, what will Shangan? Ama Tonga, because they poke themselves. We, we, and we as modern children seem not to understand the great DNA and knowledge that is encapsulated in some of these marginalized tribes. Mm -hmm. Some of us even try to change our names and our surnames and totems because we don't want to be identified, yes. quote unquote, with subcultures. Mm -hmm. 
undermined and relegated cultures. But in the midst, in the midst of us being Africans, what holds us together as Africans is the greater unity. Please listen, yes. gentlemen, show some hearts, mm. show some thumbs up, mm. show some love to our honorable guest, Ndate Singhi Sa, who has spent lots of time for us and spending time. is not the last time you're going to see him. It's not the first time you're going to be seeing him. You're going to be seeing him over again and again and again <laughs> as we are learning here on your African world. channel here, learning African problems mm -hmm. and coming back to be discussing African solutions. Until we see you again, Ponga Joshua Chigarambuku Garamashamba Huda Chiranava Nave Wanji Makumba Mwana Musendewe Shanu Wana Matanga Kugar Go away, we'll be seeing you right back. <laughs> Welcome to Amanda Omnoto Business Talk Show. It was illegally left by the apartheid government. Yeah. It's very important that for business people, whether they are especially SMMEs, yeah. in doing business with developing countries. The measurements, on the other hand, that have been introduced to deal with COVID-19 have harmed our economy beyond what I think has even been measured. The giants like China realizing that the US and Europe are losing the grip in the world economy and Africa was a playground. Many of black people's small businesses in particular are not even registered. Any country yeah. that has ever been reliant on IMF has never been able to come out. Africa is indebted to Asia and Europe. Welcome to Amanda Omnoto Business Talk Show, a show that discusses economic fundamentals with a focus on small businesses. Tune in to Amanda Omnoto Business Talk Show on Galaxy Universal Network, Channel 500 on Starset.